Welcome to 6 in the A. I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and the Frederick Health Hospital. Today's case is a case of prolonged cardiac arrest and lucas assisted PCI. Our patient is a 45 year old man with hypertension but otherwise no significant past medical history. He woke up with uh, crushing substernal chest pain and called the ambulance. Um, on EMS arrival, uh, ECG showed anterior SC elevations and the STEMI team was activated. Uh, he arrived at the ER about uh, five minutes after and was given aspirin, ticagrelor, and heparin. Unfortunately, very soon thereafter, he uh, developed ventricular fibrillation and coded. It became quite a prolonged code with the kitchen sink thrown at him. Uh, he received 30 shocks, 32 rounds of epinephrine. He was uh, received immediate automated chest compressions with the Lucas device. He was on high dose vasopressors times three. Uh, he received multiple amiodarone and lidocaine boluses. He received 14 pushes of sodium bicarb. The Lucas uh, provided very effective chest compressions. Uh, remarkably, the patient was in VF but conscious when the Lucas is on, uh, but would lose consciousness when the Lucas is paused. Now in our hospital, our, pay, our protocol is uh, uh, for ROS to have to be achieved for 10 minutes before we can move a patient to the cath lab. In this case though, the patient was actually conscious during chest compressions. So even though he never met that criteria at 8.30 in the morning, which was after 66 minutes of the patient in continuous VF, we decided to bring him to the cath lab without ROSC, uh, but supported by Lucas mechanical compressions. So here's the initial angiogram. Uh, you can see it's kind of hard to see. Uh, the uh, coronary arteries are actually obscured uh, by uh, the Lucas device. So PCI with the Lucas device has been done. Uh, it is uh, very awkward. Uh, there are uh, several case reports of operators doing it. Uh, the trick is to use very steep uh, cranial or caudal angulations uh, to avoid the device itself. Now the backboard here the, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, is available in a translucent version uh, that is more suitable for uh, fluoroscopic studies. Now, on diagnostic angiogram, you can see that the occlusion is in the proximal LED. And this was easily wired and ballooned. Uh, the balloon time in this case was about 102 minutes. Uh, and at that point, uh, the patient was still in ventricular fibrillation and had been in ventricular fibrillation for 94 minutes by this point. After balloon angioplasty, uh, the uh, TMA3 flow was in fact restored. But you should note that at this point, the patient was still in ventricular fibrillation and the flow that you see might be TMA3, but it is solely due to compressions uh, from the Lucas device. After stenting, uh, you can see that there is uh, either a spasm or a proximal edge dissection. And here's the final result after the second stent. Uh, you notice that the Lucas device is still going. The patient is still a ventricular fibrillation now for 116 minutes uh, with the flow uh, solely due to Lucas compressions. At 9.31 a.m., uh, which was 127 minutes after the onset of ventricular fibrillation, the patient finally regained ROSC. He was in sinus tachycardia. A uh, balloon pump uh, was uh, inserted. Uh, he was, quote, stable, uh, but was on maximum doses of uh, three pressors. His oxygen saturation uh, was 80 to 85 percent on maximum ventilation settings. He was uh, airlifted to Johns Hopkins, uh, where VA ECMO was placed. Uh, impella placement was also attempted, but could not be achieved due to vessel spasm. Uh, the RCA was uh, injected and had minimal disease. He was moved to the CCU. He had a, a very rocky course in the CCU, as one can imagine. Uh, on day one, his uh, ejection fraction was only 20 to 25%. Uh, his course was uh, notable for uh, ARDS, acute renal failure, ischemic colitis, GI bleed, and intracranial hemorrhage. Uh, he did achieve a gradual improvement on all fronts. By day six, ejection fraction was uh, improved to 50 to 55 percent. One day later, he was decannulated from his ECMO, and a week after that, he was moved out of the CCU. And remarkably, his neurologic function remained fully preserved. 
By day 23, uh, the patient walked out of the hospital. Uh, he was seen in clinic one week later. Uh, he was weak, but otherwise feeling well, in very good spirits. Uh, he was uh, started on cardiac rehabilitation and quickly became their start patient. Uh, repeat echocardiogram about one month later showed ejection fraction of 55%, and there were no wall motion abnormalities. So this is clearly an unusual case, um, and if we look at the literature of PCI without ROSC supported by Lucas, uh, we see this paper published in uh, July 2019, uh, where the authors looked at 219 patients with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest uh, who received uh, immediate coronary angiography. Of the 219 patients, uh, they took 56 patients without ROSC uh, to the cath lab, and of those patients uh, that they cath, uh, only one patient uh, survived uh, to hospital discharge, uh, and in this uh, uh, paper, uh, implying in 98.2% mortality. Uh, so clearly, the prognosis for all of these patients uh, is, uh, you know, quite uh, uh, quite grim. So, what are the take-home messages? Well, effective chest compressions is critical. Uh, the Lucas mechanical chest compression device uh, can uh, provide consistent effective chest compressions and can act as a bridge to ECMO or Impella, uh, especially for transferring from satellite or community hospitals. Um, it's a long shot, uh, but uh, for the right patient, um, good outcome is possible even with uh, prolonged refractory uh, ventricular fibrillation. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe uh, if you uh, enjoyed this video.